In this video, I'll cover up some of the most common mistakes that might occur when writing your CSS, the styling of your HTML. The first one is pretty obvious, although it sometimes slips into your code and you don't know and you don't remember and it was not me, it was my friend, you see? The really, really first thing that you usually need to check is your path in HTML. The first thing that you need to check is if you are using any external document here, I have a lot of stuff down here, but I don't really need to show it. And uh, I want to link it up with my HTML. I've already made a video about it, but I'm going to cover this really fast. Let me just put it bigger so you can actually see it. And imagine that I want to link it up. So the link is something like this. Okay. Oh. Then you put something like rel uh, and you put the style sheet because it's, well, yes, yes. And then you put href such as you put with the uh, anchor. Then equals and these two things, right? You can already close it and now you need to put your path, okay? The relative path. You come here and in this case, since I have index.html right next to the folder, I can put already the folder, yes, yes. And now I can put the style.css. Now let's open the go live server, right? So we can already see what's happening. Okay, there we go. This is our styling, pretty simple. And as you can see, it's already with our CSS. However, there are two different problems. The first one is that you don't know how to write it. If you don't know and want to use a nice text editor, we also the code. That's what I'm using. You can write here a link and then you can import whatever you want. You can put the favicon, which is an icon that would show up here instead of this blank page. And the fixing up is the title. And you can also link what you want right here, the CSS. If you put 2.css, it's going to create automatically this style sheet with the style CSS in the href, in the path. However, there are two different ways of linking this with the path. You can put here the folder. If you don't have it inside the folder, you can just drag it down and then it's closed. So, as you can see, it's not really linking. But if we remove here the folder, since it's close to the file of index.html, we just need to put the name of the file. However, imagine that you have your index inside the folder. You might need to put here two dots and a slash to go to the previous folder. Because these two dots, many people know, but not everybody knows and this will help you a lot in the future. Another problem that might happen with your CSS is that you are using here an image or a break. What people do, what some people do, it's putting here a slash, you know, at the end. Because you think that this way it helps the people who are reading the code and identify that this tag ends there. This is only when uh, the tag doesn't really close. And with the link, some people also do this. But if you buy any mistake, put a bar in here, in the double quotes here, if you put it inside the path, it's not going to work because the path, it's a completely different thing if you add this up here. But if you remove it again, of course, it will be loaded once again. Another very common mistake would be having your CSS with some conflicts. When you have two times the same thing being changed and you don't really understand what's happening there. So the first thing that you need to understand is the cascading. Because the name of the CSS is cascading style sheet, I believe. It surely has the cascading in the name, just trust me. And for that I'll be using here my external CSS. I'm going to apply a style for every H1 and I'm going to say that the color is blue. And then I'm going to write the same thing for the H1, right? But instead of blue, I'm going to put red. They are the same selector and the same property. Which color do you think it is? Well, if you also do red, you are right. Because the selectors are identical. The last property being assigned is going to be the one that's going to get there. However, if you remove this and you come here to the HTML file, you can open here style tag inside the head and you can put here the same thing, the H1 selector with the color of blue. And you can do the same with the color of the red. So we have the red in here, in the external, and the blue in the internal. Which one do you think it's going to be put here? Well, you might guess that it's actually the blue one. Come here, reload the page, it got blue. However, this only happens because the external is before the internal. If I cut the link from here and put it below, well, the one is going to be here, it's the red, because the red is the one that comes later. 
this is how the cascading works. It's the last has the priority. Now, let's understand another thing. Imagine that you have this, right? With a color of blue. And you also have div and h1 color of red. Okay, there we go. This selector says that the h1 will be blue. Okay, we don't even have a div. Let's put a header. And this one will say that every h1 inside the header is going to be red. This is more about the specificity. I'm not yet going to ask you what is the color that is going to be applied, but I'm going to talk about the specificity in CSS. Let's understand one thing. If we are in a room with multiple men and women, and I call for a man. Man, come here. A lot of men will look at my direction and probably come here or something like that because they are all men. I was not really specific because a lot of people looked at me. But what if I call man with the red shirt? The man with the red shirt will actually look at me. Only the ones with red shirts. There can be more than one man with a red shirt. And if it's a black shirt, it's even more probable, okay? Now this is more about the trendings, but it doesn't matter. Are you seriously watching you by yourself? Nah, I'm with my yeah! boy! And list, you can also call the John, so the name of the person, and a shirt color. Like, John with a yellow shirt, and the John with a yellow shirt will probably look at me, if there's any. And the probabilities of finding a John with a yellow shirt, or a man with a yellow shirt, are smaller. Because if we apply two different conditions, the name, and the color of the shirt, I'm being more specific. And it applies the same with here. The more specific, the more it is easy for the CSS to work. So in this case, if I have here my H1 and my H1 header, technically talking, this is going to be the last one, all right? So one is going to be red and the other is going to be blue because only this is the header. However, if I come and put it here, if we follow the cascading, the last one has a priority. However, this is not only about the cascading anymore, it's about the specificity. Okay, so in this case it's going to stay the same. The one with the header is always going to be red. There's a little graphic, a little table, so you can understand which one has more priority. The elements here, the H1, the header, and the pseudo elements, such as the first letter, okay, as you can see, come here, and only the first letter is actually red. So these two, the elements and pseudo elements, are in the last position of priority. Right after it are the classes. Classes, as you can see here, I have the greetings as a class. So I can come here and specify that the class greetings is going to have color of purple. Not only the classes, but also the pseudo classes have more priority than those of the elements and pseudo elements. Right after the greetings, one another that has a big, even bigger priority is the ID. And as you can see, main main, it's the, the ID that I've put in the first uh, H1. So I need to put the hashtag, the name, and then I can put the background color for yellow, which is the winner, uh, the color of the golden trophy, okay? And this is just to explain that the main main, the ID, has even more priority than the class. Let me show you guys. The yellow here in the, the one with the ID, instead of being purple. Even though the purple comes after following the cascade, it's later, but the priority is bigger. And lastly, there's also the inline style. If I put here, apply this style here, okay, the inline, and I put the background color of brown as an example. This brown doesn't really seem like a brown, but okay. And in this way, this background here with the class greetings, instead of being purple, is actually going to become brown, as you could see. Here it's brown because the inline style it's the one with the biggest priority and this is why you shouldn't really use the inline style too often now what if i remove all of this i put the greetings here greetings with a background color of aqua a class the every greetings so these two are going to get aqua background and i put here two exactly i'm going to call the body and the age one which are two elements, right? Versus one element only. Well, I believe that since it's only one class, but two elements, the two elements are bigger. Makes sense, right? But actually not. Because the classes will always be bigger than elements. It doesn't matter how many elements you put, if you don't have any class at all, any idea at all, any inline style at all, the class is going to always be bigger than the element. 
However, this is not always. I have here the perfect body for the body element, okay, the class. So if I put here a class, now I have a class versus no elements and one element. If I came here, well, look at this. Now since we have the same number of classes, we can already use the elements just to untie. Imagine, class, class, it's tied, but when you put here the element, the little bit more, it gets the priority and wins over. After all of these blah 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 about the priorities and all, what should you do after all? Well, you can have an ID here or there for JavaScript or for some specific, really specific things because it is not really that good, you understand? Classes are way better because IDs are only for one place and cannot really be overlapped. You cannot really overtake the IDs with any class that you have. So always spam classes. Now let's talk about good practices. You see these here? So IDs, cut off. Classes, put a lot. Put everywhere you think that you will need a class. You will need to be more specific to this element. Never work only with elements. Heather, H1. This is not something that's really rare. Or he, div, H1. The best practice is to always call for a class and then call for an element. It doesn't matter which one it is, okay? This way you can actually be specific with a class and an element inside of it. And finally, I'm going to talk about the most suspicious of all. Well, let's try it out. Come here, my page is looking cool. So let's come here, this is resetting my padding and all and font family, that's nice, right? But the semicolon, oops, forgot the semicolon. Well, now the font family, it's not because it's bugging, okay? And the next properties are not going to work as well. You get when it takes. Always check for the semicolon. Of course, there are exceptions. Don't put the semicolons on curly brackets. And it's not only the selectors. You also have the media queries, the animation, it's the keyframes. And there are many, many more ways of actually creating these selectors with the curly brackets. So always remember, after a style, a property, semicolon. After curly bracket, just put an enter and make it really pretty. I'm Joe Vegas and with this we've talked about the most common mistakes that might make your CSS not load or this piece of style is not really working correctly. So keep up the good work and I'll see you in the next video.